Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. This is Let's Paint Shadespire episode one. Today we're going to be painting the Stormcast Eternals warband. Now first let's look at our reference. Here we have the Stormcast Eternals. I'm not painting them like that. You show me a guy with a two-handed hammer, I show you Reinhardt. Hello. So we're going to be painting gold, we're going to be painting white, and we're going to be painting purple. That's the colours of the Sigmarite Brotherhood, so let's get on with it. We're going to base coat our model with Rakarth Flesh and Mechanica Standard Grey, mixed 50-50. Now we're going to do a zenithal highlight with Pallid Witch Flesh. You can do this with a paintbrush as well if you don't have an airbrush. It's just going to take you longer to do this process. So you can see we've got our base tone, it's a nice warm white which will complement gold and the purple, purple being a cold colour. So we're going to start by base coating all of the gold areas with Retributor armour. Now we're going to be shading all of the gold areas with Agrax Earthshade Gloss. We're using the gloss version for the lower surface tension, which makes it easier to go into the recesses without staining the surface. It also stops it from dulling down the metallic surface. Now we're going to layer up over that gold with Liberator Gold. The goal here with highlighting metallics is mostly to increase the shininess rather than actually changing the colour. So here we're going to use metal colour gold and this is a very shiny gold metallic. It's slightly cooler than the other tones but that works great because we're going to be using this to transition into silver in a moment. Finally, edge highlight the gold with Stormhost Silver. You could use also a VMA Chrome or VMA Silver if you have those paints to hand. Now we're going to base coat all of the steel areas with VMA Gun Grey. Remember not to use your good brush for doing this kind of stuff. Now we're going to use what I call Armor Wash. This is three parts Null Oil, two parts Agrax, and one part Drakenhoff Nightshade and one part Athonian Camo Shade. I have a big pot of this mixed up that I dip into for fancy miniatures and we're just going to slather that all over our steel areas. Once 
Once that's dry, we're going to be using Necron Compound, which is a dry brush paint. As you can see, we don't want too much of it to come off, and we only really want to use downstrokes when we're dry brushing here. Use quite a small dry brush because these areas are quite hard to get into. As you can see on the hammer, I'm mostly using this to buff or polish the surface. I want to get it nice and shiny, but I know that because I'm dry brushing, it's not going to go into the recesses. So it's going to leave that Sigma nice and proud. Keep all the details showing. Now we're going to base coat all of the purple areas with Nagaroth Knight. As you can see, my paint's quite thin here on the shoulder pad. It's going to take me uh, three coats, I think, to cover this fully. So now I'm just blocking in the highlights with Zerius Purple. Again, paint's still quite thin, just try, kind of building it up very gradually. Making sure to put the highlights where the light is reflecting naturally from my light source. I'm making sure to only use an above light source so that I can see from the angles which I'm going to take pictures or mostly view the model where those reflections are going to occur. So on these shoulder pads, it's going to be on the front and the back, and it's it's these reflections which will make the surface seem curved. So now I'm using Demonette Hide to just reinforce that highlight that I've put in there. This is the lightest colour we're going to go to because I don't want these to appear too shiny. Now I'm going to use Watered Down VGC Violet Ink and we're going to use this to just kind of transition back into that Nagaroth towards the edges there where it's darker. Next I'm using some Xerius Purple and again I'm just glazing into the shadows from the highlighted areas to try and smooth out that transition. I'm also using it to reduce the size of the highlighted area because it was a bit too big before. And finally, once you've got it all to your satisfaction, edge highlight with Demonet Hide. So here's the finished purple and gold. Steelheart's Cloak took quite a bit longer than all the other gold areas, but it was worth it in the end. Now I'm going to use a bad and black, and I'm going to be base coating the belt and the dagger scabbard and also the undersuit. I'm assuming that's made of leather or some material like that. And we're going to take two to three thin coats of this to completely cover, being very careful not to get it on the white armour. Now we're going to layer up with some dark reaper. Mostly hitting the areas where the light's going to reflect the most. Now we're going to wash those areas with non oil.
Now we're going to edge highlight those with rust grey and we only want to hit the topmost surfaces with this stuff. Now we're going to base coat the leather with Rhinox Hide. Next, we're gonna layer up some highlights with Doom Ball Brown. Now we're gonna use a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Doom Ball Brown to do our next highlight. Just making sure some of that previous Doom Ball Brown is still visible. And finally, we're going to do an edge highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm also going to cheat on the haft of the weapons and use a dry brush to paint this Cadian Flesh Tone on. And that's the finished leather. Now we're going to base coat these scrolls with Zandri dust. Then we're going to use Agrax Earthshade to shade the scrolls. We only really want to get this into the text on the scrolls, we don't really want it to settle in the actual creases. Next we're going to dry brush Screaming Skull over those scrolls, trying to build a gradient up towards the upper edges of the scrolls, also making sure we want to catch the edges and also the edges of the writing. Finally, we're going to edge highlight that with the same Screaming Skull. You can also use this to clean up any areas that the dry brushing has left a bit too grainy. The next step is all touch up on the white armour, so I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh here to touch up the light areas. And I'm going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey to kind of black line all of the creases in the armour that the uh, airbrush missed. So you can see under the neck plate there, around the back of the uh, shin armor. There's, plenty, there's lots of this to do, so I'm not going to bore you with all of it. It does add a lot to the definition of the uh, shading, though. And there we go. That's it. It's a very simple color scheme. Um, it's just it's basically it's just four colors really. Uh, painting the helmets on these guys is really easy. The airbrush does most of the work, and then you just have to paint the halos gold. I couldn't resist converting my Obrin into Reinhardt, so I use the Space Wolf head for that in case you're wondering. And the head on Angharad is from the Sisters of Avalon box. The base that you can see, I have a separate video coming up for that, which will go over in detail how I painted those bases. If you like this video, then please comment, share, and subscribe. Uh, click the bell so the bell is clicked. If this video helped you paint your warband, then please send me pictures on Twitter or the Instagrams or whatever social networks you see, they're on the screen around now. And uh, that's it, yeah. Bye.